All right, good morning, YouTube. It is 7.11 in the morning right now. Is this thing on? Cool. Wait a minute. Much better. How are we doing YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I go by the name of Luis. I am a Southern California travel-based cinematographer and photographer. A lot of people may know me as the Luis Khan. And in today's video, um, we're gonna be going out and shooting self-portraits. It's gonna be a little tutorial video on how I kind of go out and take my own pictures. As photographers, as creatives, a lot of times we're out alone in the field and we have to go out and shoot our own videos. So it can be a little bit challenging, but I've learned some things over the course of my, what, 10-ish years taking pictures. So this, this is something that uh, I've been wanting to do. So I'm going to portray that and see if you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you guys learned something. Let me know what you think, please, in the comments down below. And let's get started. All right. So the first thing you want to do is grab yourself a little cheeky outfit from your closet, something that makes you feel nice and cool for your modeling poses. Um, next, we have our camera setup. We have my 5D Mark III and my Sony ZV-1. Uh, I'm going to show you two different ways you can go about doing this. Um, when you're out in the field, it can kind of be a little difficult to shoot your own photos. Uh, the first and more traditional way would be, of course, sitting up to your, your camera to a 10 second timer, manually expose uh, your shot, manually focus it. Uh, it helps to get an object such as a chair, a water bottle, something where you're going to stand or where you're going to be. Focus on that object and then kind of you have to run back. Uh, in this case, I use my water bottle. So we, we focus on that. We manually focus on that. And then you set the timer, run quickly. Ten, you have 10 seconds, take your shot. Um, like I displayed here so you got to run back and forth and take your shot and just take a bunch until you're ready until you find one you like uh, once you found your your spot of course so that's the first method you can do um, the second method you can do is probably the more easier way nowadays most cameras have a uh, app or uh, you can connect to your phone through an app or through a barcode NFC um, in this case for the Sony ZV-1 you can connect through through an app called the Imaging Edge Mobile app. Uh, so that's the way I did it here. You connect to that, you can manually, uh, you can expose that on, on your phone, you can set a timer for it. Do all your settings, just go in front of the camera wherever you're ready to take a shot, pull out your phone, click the button, and it's as simple as that. Uh, so like I said, most modern cameras, most modern digital cameras have these features now in the cameras where it can make it so much easier for you to, to take your own photos. So. I recommend this method. I just did the old way because I'm a little old school and that's the way I learned it. But again, this way is much, much easier. Uh, as you can see here, we have our, our shot set up and then all you have to do is pretty much pull your phone out whenever you're in frame, click the button once your settings are set to where you wherever you want them to be and start shooting. Start looking wonderful for your, for your self portrait. So now we just have some clips of me posing like i said i'm not a model but i did we did my best <laughs> all right so i found a composition i really like which is here let me get out of the way but the sun is killing my eyes so i had to go run and grab some glasses real quick so we'll have glasses on in the photo i think but let's get it mm. another thing i forgot to mention what I like to do before I get started, I like to create a little mood board on what I'm gonna be doing and like to help inspire me. Um, I'll show it on somewhere here instead of showing you here because you can't see it. All right, so like I was just saying right now on camera, it's always good to inspire yourself and have some inspo before you go out and shoot. It's good to go ahead and go somewhere like on Pinterest, on Instagram, take some screenshots or something uh, that inspires you that you wanna recreate a look. For, for instance, on my case, I did Pinterest, which works great because you can create like a little mood board. I had an idea that I wanted palm trees in the background obviously myself as a subject in front. So some of the photos I liked was this one right here because first and foremost, I knew I was gonna do a sunrise shoot. So I knew I wanted some sort of shadows with the palm trees and some mountains. And then I, I'm not a model and all you models out there, it takes a lot to model, it's hard. <laughs> um, so I did some pictures of some models to help me pose because I don't know how to pose, I'm usually behind the camera. So that always really, really helps. Or even just following creators that, that you look up to that you aspire to be like. So say hello to my little doggy. This is Mia. Say hi to the camera. All right. So hopping on to Lightroom now, I'm going to kind of guide you, show you kind of my workflow. So we took around 50 photos, as you can see here. Landed on some decent ones. Uh, like I said, I'm not a model, so don't expect greatness. So this is the first one that I landed on. I liked it. It's decent. Did the little 
little pose, you know. Like I said, this was the vision I had, the background, the it was sunrise, so I wanted the shadows. This was funny. Remember to stay hydrated. <laughs> it's probably the best picture of all of them. So I think we're gonna go with something like this one. One thing too, one rule I like to always sit as wide as you can, because you the, the worst thing that can happen is that you come to post, you come to post a photo, post production, then you come to post a photo and you need the extra space or it's not aligned perfectly. So always shoot wide and then you can crop in post production. I like to crop my photo first. So like I already know I don't like this part right here. Um, I don't like these signs here. So I'm going to crop them. This we can I'll show you how to edit that out quickly later. That looks pretty decent. One thing you can easily do just to kind of see where you want the photo to go is literally slide it left to right. Like slide it. First and foremost, I already know that this looks way warm. I shot this in sunrise, sun was hitting my face. I know I want this a little bit cooler. Right about there, if you want to see the before and after, you can already see a difference. Um, same with the tent, maybe like a plus 13. That's good. So one cool little tip too on Lightroom is that if you press this key right here, I don't know what the name of it is, I'm kind of stupid, but if you press this key right here, you can see the before and after really quickly. As well, if you press L, you can kind of get a semi blacked out version and then a completely blacked out it really helps show the colors next we move on to the tones and the exposure and the contrast so i know it's a little overexposed so I, i'm gonna go a little lower on this one like right there is fine same for contrast um depending on your style of editing and stuff you might want to add a lot of contrast add a little bit for this one it's a little already i feel like it's a little faded a little too light so i kind of want to make it a little more darker right about there would be fine plus 18. The highlights um i know the highlights were bright the sun was hitting my face so i kind of want to go lower on those um as you can see in my face especially my face my face is kind of blown out on the exposure um this tool will help you a lot too to see if your your, your image is exposed or not like right there um next shadows so for shadows um i'll go maybe a little lower on this one i don't want to really t tweak those too much because it's already pretty good so for the whites um i'll go a little under maybe not too much. It's also a minus four. That that works. I like how that looks. For the blacks, this will either darken your your, your dark spots of your image, the black spots, or like I said, brighten them. Um, it's similar to shadows, but this one I also don't mess with too much. Maybe a little bit. Um, so I'll leave that at negative 16. Uh, maybe expose it a little tiny more. There we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty nice. Um, as far as the presence in terms of texture, clarity, and dehaze, I don't touch those that much, rarely if ever. In terms of vibrant saturation, there's a funny story I have about this. I had a follower a long, long time ago that still freaking triggers me because I had a person that would say, all you do to your image is just increase saturation, right? Yeah. I just spent an hour on Lightroom. Just, I just do this. There, photo's done. We're ready, we're done. Obviously, I don't just do that. So I'll lower the saturation a tiny bit on this one because I think it's a little, still a little too, too bright and too colorful. Um, not that there's anything wrong with being colorful. <laughs> this is a big one the tone curve uh what i like to do in my pictures is kind of do an s curve i can add a point there add another point there um so right here i usually go up on it and increase it as you can see if i go lower it kind of dulls the picture it doesn't look that good if you make it a little higher it kind of brings out the the features it makes it a lot, a lot more nice uh, this one i usually go a little bit lower so it darkens the the shadows and darkens the blacks um, so maybe about right there. And then this one is important because this is what gives you the fade color. If you see a lot of photos that are super faded out, almost gives you that film look. A lot of times this is what people are doing. So you can increase this higher, higher, higher. And if you really want to go for a really faded look, I mean, you can do that. Um, some people just do this overkill. Um, it doesn't look too good in my opinion, but so like there. And then if I show you really quickly, that's before the the s curve and this is after so i think that looks a lot lot better um in terms of these this i love using the hsls because in this setting you can change everything in terms of the colors so like let's say you don't like the greens and you hate this 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 tone of green you like it to be like a darker more like hawaii fall green something like that um you can change that so like the, the leaves and the palm trees if you want to make them way more vivid and like a dark green you can do that if you want to make it a light green and you don't really like the color green you want to just make them dull and dead you can do that as well um, same with the blues if you like the blues to be a little more turquoise or just more darker blue almost purple same thing like see if you look at this guy right here um and like i said you can toggle these and just go left and right but be careful because like right now see on the shirt it goes really really teal so i actually gonna go lower on the blues on the saturation part this is where you can tweak it so that it's either popping out a lot of the color or it's not but yeah i like them all low right there 
I think that looks good. And again, you can tweak with all these if you want the oranges to pop out, like in a sunset photo. Obviously, I'm not gonna do that here. Uh, a little lower on that one. And then for this one, I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. There we go. Oh, and that's another tip. If you double click on any of these cogwheels, it goes back to just the neutral setting, the zero. Um, this is really important. It's enabling profile corrections. It corrects the profile of the lens. So sometimes when you shoot it, it distorts the image straight from your lens. So if you enable it, look what happens. Look closely. See? Well, I usually always remove the chromatic aberration and always turn on the, the profile corrections. Lastly, the calibration of all the uh, primary colors and the shadow. I like it a little tiny bit on the on the purple side, on the reddish side, so I'll do that. I'm gonna leave that as is. For this one, I think it looks a lot better if I go lower on the saturation, so maybe like a positive 10 on this one. Um, I think a negative 11 kind of looks nice, or just negative 10 to keep it at 10. And then this one I've always used a lot, the the blue primary. So like I said, this is this also helps you get those, if you ever see photographers that have this, this blue, or this colors on their photos, like it pops out the oranges, makes them more red, and then the sky's like very, very turquoise. Uh, I did this a lot on my last video, on the Joshua Tree video. I think uh, maybe they're like a negative, no, let's do like a negative five on this one. Negative five, I think that looks good. Um, and then lastly, the saturation on the blue primary, it could be like negative, I'll go negative five on this one as well. <coughs> so that's a little bit of how I do my color grading on my photos, my editing on my photos on Lightroom. All right, so now that we have our image on Photoshop, I'm gonna show you really quickly a tool that I love to use. Um, I use it for everything, just to get rid of unwanted stuff uh, in my photos. So one way you can go about this is using the uh, Spot Healing Brush tool. Um, this tool saves lives, it's a miracle. Say you got a girlfriend that's like, but babe, I have a pimp on this picture, don't post this one. I got you, bro, or, or, or ma'am. Like, let's just say this is a big old pimple on my face, right? That, that right there. The bracket keys, um, you can make it smaller or bigger. Just a quick little tip. All you have to do is, it's really, really hard. Boop, gone. This tool works wonders. I can get rid of anything I want on my face, on the image, um, sharpen it, looks really, really clean. Um, say I don't like that hair that's just taken out, I forgot to shave last night. Um, clean up the image and voila, it's perfect. More importantly, if you wanna get rid of things that are ugly in the photo, say you don't like this right here, which, which we talked about earlier. I like to use a lasso tool and use a content aware fill. Uh, like I said, the lasso tool, I use this a lot to get rid of things that I don't want. Say I don't like this right here, this piece of uh, tile right here that I left in the picture and I don't like it. It's so simple, all you do is go there, you go to edit, content aware fill, uh, make sure that it is on these settings and then apply it and then boom it's gone just like that okay gone so here's another one that I found um, so this particular one is on my arm it's a little smudge that I have again go to content aware boom make sure it's on the rectangular auto uh, depending on what you like um, the color if you want if you, this bugs you you can change it too as well um, I like to leave it like where it's at so I don't really care uh, and then apply it and then go ahead and delete it press ok and then it's gone um, like I said, if it's not 100% perfect, don't worry about it too much because when you zoom out, I mean, it's still not going to be there. So, And there you have it, a beautifully edited photo by yours truly, the Luis Khan. If you like what you're seeing, if you like the content, if you'd like me to show more of this content, please consider liking, subscribing, um, and dropping down a comment down below on what you thought. Um, once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support. Peace.